there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Anais and usually I make videos related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now when I got started with Kubernetes and when I was learning about more complex structures within Kubernetes and deployments, I made a video on Kubernetes operators. Now throughout the past year, my explanation on Kubernetes operators obviously changed. So here's an updated version on Kubernetes operators. What are they? Why do you use them? How do you use them? How do you create them? How secure are they? And how can you check how secure they are? And everything in between. Let's get started. Like always, I have a blog post and here's a draft version for this video, link below. So if you prefer the written version, please do check out the blog post link below in the description. It has all the details, everything I'm going to talk about in this video as well. So what is an operator? Well, <laughs> If this is our Kubernetes cluster, let's get started there, right? So this is our Kubernetes cluster and inside of our Kubernetes cluster, we can deploy resources. So for example, we can deploy a pod, right? A pod is the smallest resource that you would have in your Kubernetes cluster and a pod is basically running a container. Now that pod will be dependent on other Kubernetes resources, such as a service or other resources, right? There might be lots of different services that are completely connected in different ways and that are interacting all in your Kubernetes cluster. Now, this is on a very, very high level, bear that in mind. The thing is that Kubernetes ultimately runs on something called controllers. Kubernetes runs on controllers. And controllers are basically providing an automated version of human processes, okay? So what a controller does, it automates a human task in some way or another. So when we're interacting with our Kubernetes cluster, with the Kubernetes API, right, through the kube API, what we do is we do kubectl get, kubectl apply, kubectl logs, um, and anything in between, right? We do lots of manual tasks. A lot of times when you're working within your running deployments, if you're running deployments, what you likely have to do is modify some deployments, especially in your staging environments. You might have to go in manually and check things, modify things, debug things, right? So there are lots and lots of manual tasks involved. And that's a problem. So problem, lots of manual tasks. And ultimately, Kubernetes is such a vast, constantly changing environment, right? There are so many different tools that we use within our Kubernetes cluster, especially in production environments. Um, there's so much that's changing. Kubernetes is built so you can update your deployments on a daily basis. You can deploy new features on a daily basis. Everything is constantly moving. If things are moving this fast, you do not want to make manual changes to your environments, right? It's a big no-no, okay? So, big no-no. No. Manual tasks, manual changes. We don't want that, okay? I hope you can see this. Let's maybe zoom in there a little bit. Okay, so. This is that. Um, now, another thing, another concept you have to understand, and that's something that I also did a video about a while ago, are custom resource definitions. So I did lots of different videos on, for example, GitOps tools, other tools, uh, lots of tools that ultimately are deployed inside of your cluster through CRDs, custom resource definitions, CRDs. Uh, and CRDs basically extend the Kubernetes API by defining how new applications, different applications, are supposed to run in your cluster and what kind of resources they deploy and run inside of your cluster. So on a very, very high level, okay? So the thing is, when you have CRDs within your cluster, they are ultimately custom resources within your cluster and they are ultimately other Kubernetes resources. Now, Here's where operators come in. Operators are basically automating tasks, such as checks, for CRDs. <laughs> On a very high level. I know it sounds very complex, but hear me out. So basically, controllers, they check things. They check things, they monitor, check, 
monitor, and they do other things, okay? That's what controllers do. Now, an operator is something that continuously checks specific workloads within your cluster, specific, per I don't know, specific resources within your cluster or your entire cluster. It checks the state of those resources. It performs specific tasks, okay? So an operator could be, could perform tasks, uh, run checks or scans um, on a continuous basis, okay? So that's what an operator does. Operators are very popular within the GitOps model. And this is not a video on GitOps. You can check one of my other videos if you're interested about a video on GitOps. But ultimately, what an operator would do is, so let's say we have here our operator. The operator is running with another cluster. Inside cluster. Okay, so this operator is then responsible to check the cluster. So let's assume this is the cluster. Oop, kiss. <laughs> Kate. Um, <laughs> Kate, this is our cluster. And in this cluster, we want to deploy pods. Now, with GitOps, we tell the operator, here's our Git repository with our manifests. Kate's manifests, okay? This defines like all deployments, all services, anything that we want to deploy. And the operator is responsible to scan, first of all, to scan, um, oops, um, <laughs> to scan our cluster. It scans it and there's nothing running, okay? Let's assume there's nothing running. It's like, oh my God, this cluster is empty, okay? And then the operator will check the desired state that's defined within Git. Okay, this is the desired state. Desired state, and this is the actual state. Okay, so the operator will be, will go like, nothing here. Ooh, okay, cool, this is my actual state. And then it will check our manifests within our Git repository and be like, oh, there's something, but there's nothing. But here's something, but there's nothing. So this thing has to go over here, okay? So the operator will take whatever's defined here within Git and put it here, okay? Here. Kids manifest, okay? So ultimately the operator is inside of your cluster as well, okay? Because that's a security thing. Operators should live inside of your cluster and it should pull resources from outside inside. You don't want to push resources from outside to inside, okay? So the operator basically will pull resources. Pull resources. I could go into more detail why that's the case. But it will pull resources inside of the cluster, okay? And then deploy them. Deploy them. Okay, this is what a GitOps operator will, for example, do. Okay, now we can have other operators. For instance, we have our trivia operator. So what does a trivia operator do? Well, if this is our kids cluster, yeah, then we will deploy the trivia operator in the trivia namespace. Trivi system namespace. And here we will deploy the trivia operator. The operator, okay. And this trivia operator has a task. It's supposed to run scans of anything else that's running with a new cluster. So whenever there's a new workload, so basically, okay, what it does do. The operator will scan your cluster. So for example, if you tell it to scan all the namespaces, it will scan all the namespaces, nothing there, okay? Then you run a deployment, right? And you deploy an application. Deploy application. So you have a deployment. Then the operator will run another scan and be like, there's a new deployment. Oh, let's scan it, scanning it, okay? And <laughs> that's a task. And based on the scan, the operator will then create a report, a vulnerability report. So this is ultimately how the operators work with a new cluster at a very simplistic level, okay? This is what's going on here. Now you can find different tutorials where I showcase different applications that use operators 
in my other videos. For example, here's the uh, full tutorial, Getting Started with Flex. It's up there now. Um, then here we have Kubernetes security scanning with Trivi CI and Trivi Operator. Here's more details on the Trivi Operator, for instance. And here's also GitOps with Argo CD on how it works there. So let's look at Trivi Operator inside of our Kubernetes cluster. So going here to all of my namespaces, I have deployed the Trivi Operator. Trivi Operator is deployed in the Trivi system namespace. As you can see, it's just another part. However, this part has responsibilities. So whenever I deploy a new um, workload, such as my application in the app namespace, there's no application running here because it's in the default namespace, um, then Trivi will be like, oh, there's a new application running in the default namespace, and it will check it for vulnerabilities, for instance, and it will create a vulnerability report that tells me this application is shit, okay? Sorry, I'm swearing in this video. <laughs> this is a horrible application and I've already put out an updated version of it. So you can check that out as well without vulnerabilities. But here's the horrible version of this image that's running within my cluster, right? Um, now the thing is, operators need lots of access to different uh, resources within your cluster. Um, now, you want to make sure you monitor what kind of access um, cluster, cluster role, cluster role binding, um, what type of access the operator gets. So if we are looking at the Trivi system namespace, at the Trivi operator, we can see here what kind of access the operator has, what it can do, right? So <laughs> in terms of what kind of resource it can create and delete and so on. Now, now there's a really, really good talk from last KubeCon called Treasuring Kubernetes Resources Operating and Operators. And it's by Kevin Ward. It's a great talk. I highly recommend to watch it. And basically they're introducing, um, a tool called Bad Robot. And Bad Robot can be used to scan your operator for security issues. So here's a list of all the security issues it will scan for. And then it will tell you what's wrong with the operator. It can scan, you can scan your own operator, you can scan any open source operator that you're using, such as the trivia operator, right? Uh, but you ultimately want to do that. Now, let's talk a little bit of how far we can take operators. This is a slide from a KubeCon talk I did with my ex-manager Alex Jones last year at KubeCon North America. And it basically shows one of the super clusters that we were working with when we were working at Zivo. Now, those super clusters have compute nodes within them and their responsibility is to schedule tenant clusters. Basically, if somebody spins up a Kubernetes cluster through Zivo, that cluster is supposed to run on one of those compute nodes, wherever there's space, it's going to spin up a cluster. Okay. So all of those compute nodes, they have some components within it. And then a tenant cluster will be spun up on one of those compute nodes. Okay. The thing is that this all has to work in an automated way. You can't manually spin up and modify tenant clusters and you can't spin up and modify manually thousands of tenant clusters. It just doesn't work. And that's what you need operators for to do it for you. So we've built operators to do exactly that. When somebody is creating a new um, Kubernetes cluster through Zeebum, it would spin it up on one of the uh, free compute nodes within the regional supercluster. So if you spin up a new tenant cluster, a new cluster on the Zeebum platform, um, <laughs> for example, in the Frankfurt region, then it would be scheduled on a supercluster in Frankfurt on one of those compute nodes. That's ultimately what it is. Lastly, if you want to learn more about operators, custom resource definitions, I also would highly recommend Ivan's, I hope I pronounced his name right, um, a blog, it's here, where he's going in really great detail into Kubernetes API, custom resource definitions, and also Kubernetes operators. So how do you build operators? Well, there are lots of different ways that you can build an operator. I personally built once an operator from, from scratch, also based on templates. Um, it was a cross-bank provider. 
um, they're just basically working like an operator, but it's like their cross-plane model for operators. So that's when we built, when we basically used one of their existing operators, providers, and we just based the new operator that we were creating on the existing one as a template. Now, there's also the operator framework and it's related to the operator SDK. I haven't looked into it much, which it probably should, um, <laughs> but um, basically it can be used to make it easier for you to create an operator. There are also smaller versions, templates on how you can create a Kubernetes operator, for example, through Go um, and templates for that. So if you're curious and experimenting around with it, try it out. Also, there's a video by Alex, um, which I don't have up yet, which I'm going to find and also put in the description and in the blog post, um, which shows you how to create an operator from scratch. So check out those resources if you're curious to learn more. Now, I hope this video was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos to stay tuned, tuned and notified of upcoming videos. I hope you have an amazing day. See you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.